The last phase is the intestinal phase. This is when food enters the intestine. And this is where we want to be able to regulate gastric secretions. So to regulate gastric activity, gastric juice secretion and um, like peristalsis and movement, we wanna be able to do this so that we can control what's coming in right here. We wanna be able to, um, if food is not digested, is too much is coming in, um, we wanna be able to, to regulate that. This is the last phase of gastric regulation. After several hours of mixing in the stomach, chyme starts to enter the duodenum. Um, and we wanna be able to control the rate at which that happens. So the small intestine can effectively do its job in digesting and absorption. We don't want chyme to be, to be flowing in like too fast. So as chyme enters the duodenum, we've got, guess what, stretch and chemoreceptors in the duodenum that are going to respond. They're going to trigger the enterogastric reflex. A reflex that both feeds back a short reflex to the enteric neurons um, of the stomach. And there's a long reflex to the CNS to, what do you think, decrease parasympathetic, increase sympathetic. And that's then going to go to the stomach. These are both or was I gonna write? This is our short reflex and our long, which you already know those terms, right? Both of these reflexes are going to, I'm gonna do a different color, inhibit gastrin release. Inhibit gastric activity close the pyloric sphincter, shut off digestion coming into the intestine. The last thing is the hormones produced in this small intestine here. When you've got arrival of lipids and carbohydrates you have in the small intestine that's going to result in cck and secretin release hormones produced by the duodenum itself So lipids and carbohydrates had um, stimulated CCK and secretin. Another thing that can stimulate these two hormones is um, a decrease in pH. So as chyme enters the duodenum, that's going to decrease pH within the duodenum. This isn't related to stretch receptors actually. So let me actually do that here. The chyme is gonna stretch stuff. It's also going to have a low pH, that low pH also triggers CCK and secretin release. I haven't told you what these things do yet, but maybe you can guess, right? If we have a low pH um, in the chyme, what are these gonna do to gastric activity? We want them to turn it off, slow it down. They are going to inhibit, I don't have those cells written on this slide, um, the chief cells, the parietal cells, um, I believe is actually mostly those two chief and parietal, um, which is our pepsinogen and our HCL. Those are gonna decrease. We don't wanna make more acid, right? If we're already having a lot of acidic acid come from the time, we're maintaining that variable relatively well. Um, so that's, that's negative. We also have a negative effect on peristalsis. 
we're going to inhibit peristalsis, which is going to decrease motility of the stomach and decrease what's coming out into that small intestine. Um, so this whole intestinal phase regulate gastric, gastric activity, typically decrease. There are exceptions to that um, in terms of specific stimuli. So for example, partially digested proteins will feed back to increase um, gastrin release to speed gastric processing because the proteins should have been digested in the, in the stomach. Okay, we'll come back to CCK and secretin um, when we get to the small intestine because they are also going to regulate and stimulate the um, pancreas and bile ejection. Okay, I want to review for you with a different diagram here because this is a little messy, which, which is fine, right? Fine, totally fine. Um, I wanna do this one more time here with a nice summary. So we've got intestinal phase, presence of fatty hypertonic, so like high osmolarity, really salty, acidic chyme. Where? In the duodenum. I think some people say duodenum. I don't care. We're gonna have a endocrine response, hormone response, and a neural response. Let's do neural response first. Chemoreceptors and stretch receptors are going to detect um, this stimulus, the stimulus, potentially you know, um, high protein as well. But let's not do that one. This is going to trigger our enterogastric reflex initiated in the small intestine. And there's both a short, actually, I'll, I'll do that over here, a short to the enteric neurons of the stomach and a long via the central nervous system increase sympathetic, decrease parasympathetic, because we want to decrease digestion, right? We want to decrease, um, and that's the last step here. These things are going to decrease peristalsis, stomach motility. They are going to decrease, don't have any room down there. Um, decrease emptying right into the duodenum, also going to decrease gastric juices. The hormonal response is detected by these, um, actually, let me see this. There we go. Yeah, by the duodenal endocrine cells. They're actually also called enteroendocrine cells because they're part of the digestive system, but whatever. The endocrine cells themselves right, can act as, as stimulant um, receptors, just like the pancreas can, remember? They are going to secrete these hormones, secretin, CCK. There are others, hormone release, they're hormones because they're traveling in the bloodstream. They're going to have the same effect by acting on the stomach itself. They're also gonna travel to the bloodstream and act on our um, pancreas and, and gallbladder. And last thing here, this is a feedback loop. So by decreasing gastric juices, by decreasing um, motility and decreasing emptying, we are responding to that stimulus, which was the presence of these things in the first place that stopped those things from being present more.